Uh, so let's also talk about the SQL, the structured query language. Again, normally we will we would spend two weeks uh, covering this part. This class just give you a very quick uh, overview of the SQL, and there are a lot of great uh, resources. For example, in <laughs> all the code from this class is from this website. So that is from PostgreSQL. Um, Tutorial. So if you are interested, um, you can follow the tutorial on that website. Okay. Um, and also for SQL, um, so it is a standard uh, query language to uh, query data, insert data, create tables, databases, etc. Um, so normally all the products, all the DBMS um, data management system. Uh, support the, all the SQL, but they are just tiny, tiny differences. So, <clears throat> so basically, the, the syntax is all the same, all over all the different, like at MySQL, PostgreSQL, etc. So, they are just tiny, tiny differences. Uh, so, basically, SQL can query the data by selecting, selecting records from the tables where the specific criteria are met. So I think SQL is pretty uh, easy to understand. Um, you can also update the records. You can also delete the records, insert new records. Uh, you can even use SQL to create tables, views, indexes, databases, users, and also more. OK, so user is just different accounts that can access your database. Uh, so let's just look at some very, very simple examples. Again, the more details, you can check this website. So let's say we can want to create a table. So create a table, this, you can use a create table statement. And here, this is a syntax. Uh, the syntax is create table and also table name. OK, uh, so we assume that this table is not exist. And we have the parentheses. Okay. Um, after the parentheses, we have to tell the column name, the data type of that column. Um, and also, depending on the type, you have to provide the length. So if that is a integer, you don't need to provide provide length. However, it is if that is a character, you do need to provide that what the length for that uh, character. And do you have any constraint for that column? So for example, it does not allow the non-values, et cetera. And you have defined all the columns that in your table. And finally, do you have other constraints for that entire table? So for example, the indexes, primary keys, et cetera. And finally, you need to use a semicolon to indicate, OK, so that is one single statement. So here, this is one example. So here we create a table. We call it student. And the public is the schema. Remember that we mentioned a schema is like a folder that contain multiple tables. So we put this student table in this public schema. And we use dot to represent the relationship so that it's student within this public schema. OK, and parentheses. So here we want to create a SID column, which is integer. Because it is integer, you don't need to tell the length. And here we have constraints. So that means that for this student ID, it cannot be non-values. So it cannot be empty. Next, we have student name, student major, the year of the student for the name and also major. Those are the character vary. So that's the type of the data. Um, and the length is for the name, it is 50, because I think that should be enough for most <laughs> common names. And also the major is 20, char uh, 20 characters. OK, so each column is separated by this common. And finally, the constraint for the table. So I tell, OK, so the student ID is a primary key, and the primary key name is student PK. OK, and because this is a single statement, so I, I do not need 
this same colon, so that is fine. Um, so this will be the output. So once you run this SQL code in the uh, query editor, okay, so in this query editor, you can see we have a table being created. Okay, so that is how we can create tables. Well, there are more you can do for creating tables, like adding more constraints, etc. So this is just a very simple example. And we will try those examples in today's lab. Okay, so hopefully that will give it make uh, make more sense. Adding table, uh, adding data. So we can use insert statement to insert data into a table, and the syntax is insert into, and you have to tell the table name, and <clears throat> within that table you have to tell okay, so which column do you want to insert values, and followed by the values keyword and also uh, parentheses. And you tell okay the values that will be in each column. So remember that the order of the columns and also values should match. So value one will go to column one, value two will go to column two. So keep in mind that it, they should be matched. So if you miss the columns here and also values here, a non value will be inserted. Okay, a non value will be inserted into that missing columns here. Okay, so now let's go back to our examples. So remember, we just created the student table. We have student ID, student name, major, and also years. So now we insert those values. Okay, remember there's S. So the first one is ID. The second one is um, student name, and also major, and also year. Okay, so they go to corresponding name, major, year, etc. And the semicolon, so that is one statement. And the second one, we insert student 2, so that is S2 in IE major 2020. And now next, we insert student 3, S3, CS major, uh, enrolled in the 2019. And our student 4 and our student 5. Okay, so after we run those code, uh, so those are the uh, results look like. So now we have five records being inserted. We have those student names, majors, so one in GS, one in I, uh, one in CS, the other two in GS as well. And also we have the student year. Okay, so that is inserting the data or adding the data. We can also update data and also delete data, but we are not going to do that in this um, class. All right, let's see we can, how we can make queries. So making query is pretty simple. We just use select statement. Okay, you can select uh, what column do you want. So if you want all the columns, you can use star instead. If you want specific columns, you can just uh, tell which columns you are looking for and from which table. Okay, so here this is one example. So once we insert the data, we say, okay, select everything from Again, schema dot table public dot student so that is full table name. So it will retain all the records in that in that table. Okay. We also have order by statement so to sort the result. So the syntax is that after you select the columns from the tables, you can order by specific columns and you can choose either descending or earth sending uh, the order. So this is one example. So here we see, we, we just, in this case, we just want the student name and also year the student enrolled from the student table. And we can order by the year that student being enrolled in this ascending order. So in this output, we can see we have the student names and sorted by the year that they enrolled. Okay, uh, so that is making the queries. When we're making queries, we can also fill the data by using these where conditions. So we can fill the rows based on specific conditions. So the syntax is here. So select columns from tables and followed by where. So in where, we define the conditions here. We can also use a limit to get a subset of the rows generated by the columns. 
for example, we select uh, everything from the table and also we can limit, okay, so number of the rows should be retained. Okay, number of the rows should be retained. Let's look at this example. So this example is a little bit complicated. So it combines what we have talked earlier. Uh, so first, we want the student major name and also year being enrolled from this student table. We want to field the data. We just want student, okay, so that's in the GS major, okay? So if you remember, there are three students in the GS major. Uh, for the result, we want the result order by the year of the student being enrolled, okay? with ascending order. So the first first record will be the student that uh, being enrolled the, the earliest, the earliest one. And we just want to limit the number one result. So the final output is the GS student that is the first student enrolled in this table. Okay. So that is a combination of the queries at from all from our uh, combining our uh, the previous slide. Uh, in SQL, we can also uh, make some calculations by using these aggregation functions. So those aggregation functions like average, the count, number of the records, maximal, minimal, and also total, and their more aggregation functions. The syntax is pretty simple. So select, and you apply these aggregation functions. So in this case, we are using count. Okay, we want count how many records in these columns from this table. However, we want count for specific queries, so we can use where clause. Okay, so where conditions. So here, let's see one example. So here, we want count the number of the student. So we count number of the SIDs. Remember, SID is a prime key, so they should be unique. And for the number of SIDs in the output table, we want to call it number of enrolled. So you can see in output table, it's number enrolled uh, from the public student. Remember that we have five records. So if we don't have this uh, where clause, the result will be five. However, we want to filter out the other majors. So we want to say, okay, we just want the major in GS. So now we only have three students because we have three students that majoring in GS. Okay, uh, so that is the aggregation functions. Uh, we can also group the data, so that is very useful sometimes. So group is means that we can divide the rows into groups and the then we can apply those aggregation functions on each group item, on each, uh, on each. So the syntax here, for example, we can select columns and also we can apply aggregation functions on the same column, on the different columns, from the table and also group by uh, the column that you want uh, uh, aggregation by, aggregated by, okay? So here, for example, here, for example, we want to see the number of students that group by the major. So we see we select the student major, and we also use a application function count SID, and the SID count SID will be reported in this in row number from the student table, and this time we say group by student major. In this case. Each major will count number of records. So the final output will be that, okay, in GS we have three, in CS we have one, in IE we have one. Okay, so that is grouping the data. Uh, 